This is like the third time I'm trying to get this out. What is up guys? I hope you're having a great weekend. I know I am. Today we're going to talk a little bit about a new slicer that has been made available to everyone in the community whereas in the past it was actually closed source for Zortrax who is the maker of this. Uh, they used it for a lot of their printers including the Inkspire which is one of their MSLA printers. It has now been made available to anyone with an MSLA printer. So this appeals to nearly anyone in the past few months who has gotten an MSLA printer and it's great to see that they've made it open to everyone. So I'm gonna start off with some of the things I like about it and then we'll move into some of the things that I didn't like too much and then we'll wrap up at the end. So off the get-go, one of the things I really like about it, it has this nice wizard that it actually allows you to go from adding your model, setting your print settings, doing your supports, and then giving you a preview at the end. And that's a nice logical flow as you go through to slice your model. So I really like that. Another thing I like about it is there's this bounding box that actually shows you your model as it's on the build plate in reference to your build volume and I think that's really good. It really shows you where your model sits in that build volume. Another really good feature is if your model exceeds the build volume, the entire model turns red. And I think that's a very good indicator that you're not going to be clipping your model when you actually go to put it to print. So to me, that's a really, really nice feature. For supports, this software actually does a really, really good job. I did a comparison between this and Cheetobox with the same settings and the auto generation of supports on the Z Suite was actually a lot more supports than placed on Cheetobox. And I put both of those to print together and we'll take a look at that very soon on what the results were. For MSLA printers, sometimes you may find that you have some overgrowth in the size of your model or shrinkage depending on the resin that you use. So this actually gives you the option to put some compensation in so when you print your model, it's as close to the actual size as possible. And this is a really, really good feature, especially if you test the resin as you get it and you run some calibration tests so you get the exact values for that particular resin. So this is a really good feature. Sometimes you may add a model to your build plate and it's much larger than the build volume. This software has the advantage of allowing you to split that model right in the software and it gives you the separate sections to allow you to put it to print. That is a really, really good feature. For the supports, there's a really nice diagram that shows you where the different sections of the supports are and how they correspond to the different inputs that you put. And to me, that visual representation really makes it clear when you need to add supports to your model, how it's gonna look and how it's going to actually be supported. And I think that is a really nice addition for visual learners. Are you kidding me? <sighs> okay, where were we? Right. So another good addition to this software is to be able to break down what the times look like for exposure and when the LED is off. And I think that's nice you'll be able to tell where the time actually goes and if you're applying to reduce your print time, this is a good option to look into exactly where that happens. Also, if you have a lot of supports, this will allow you to adjust your exposure time based on the number of supports. So I think that's a good feature also. For those of you who have models that are really close to the build plate, this software actually carves the raft around the model so it doesn't merge with the model when it's printed. And that is a good thing. So we've been speaking about the pros and what I like about this software. Now let's talk a little bit about what I didn't like. Off the get-go, when I installed this software, one of the things I really, really didn't like was as soon as it came up, there were no buttons. It was 
it was just a blank window that stared at you and as a beginner you may be daunted by that i had to close it down and restart it and only then i was given the option to add a printer which leads me to the next problem if you are custom using chi2 box and you have used your x and y values there you're gonna be in some problems chi2 box and this software z suite actually has different conventions for x and y so for this one your chi2 box x is your y and your chi2 box y is your x keep that in mind another thing i didn't like about this software was that it was very visible that it's not native to your mac which is what i use and you can tell that this software was struggling a little bit it was very very slow on my macbook which has an i5 processor now if you have a faster machine that's all well and good but if you don't have a fast machine you're gonna have a challenge with this just rotating your models as you go along now when you add your model to the build plate and you add supports and you add your drain holes in chi2 box it's very visible what it's going to look like but in z suite that lattice structure that you are, you've been accustomed to for your supports you're not going to see it until you slice your model and the same goes for your drain hole so just keep that in mind and that's something i really wish that they had a visual representation before you actually slice the model but hey that's how it's done here one of the biggest gripes you will actually have with this software is the layer height so if your printer is not a Zotrax and most of us it's not then you're going to be limited to a 0.05 millimeter layer height and for some people that's just not good enough even if you have a Zotrax printer like the Inspire the lowest layer height that you're able to get is 0.025 whereas in Chi2 box you could actually set it right down to 0.2 so if you are dependent on really small layer heights, this is something you're gonna have a limitation on if you use Z Suite. So one of the features that this touts is to be able to actually auto orient your model on the build plate. I had limited success in this. For very small models, it worked well, but if you have a large model that is approaching the size of your build area, it does have some challenges in being able to rotate this optimally. Another downside, I think, is the lack of support editing. You are able to edit some of the supports, but it's not very easy, and you can't do a lot. So just keep that in mind. I would advise you to take a look at it. If you are accustomed moving your supports around, you're gonna have a little challenge doing that in Z Suite. One thing I noticed is that if you hollow your model, the hollow model in Z Suite looks very different to the hollowed model in Chi2 Box, and I'm not sure why. Maybe it's the algorithm that they actually use, but in Z Suite, the hollowed model, the shell actually looks thicker than the shell in Chi2 Box. So keep that in mind. I actually hollowed out a model and ended up with two separate sections whereas if it was done in Cheetu box which I did the actual internals was joined together so which one should you use should you use Cheetu box or should you switch to Z suite well my answer is it depends Z suite as a package is a little more complicated in its installation and as you have seen I had some problems going through that but once you could get the hang of the software and get it running its support generation is really really well on the other hand chi2 box is a really really good software but you will have to add in supports manually and if you're up for that then by all means go chi2 box if not and you're like me and you're a power user then you have no problem adding supports yourself so there you have it guys my first look at Z Suite since it has been made available to everyone. And it's my pros and cons, what I like, what I don't like. Of course, it's not a full review, but please let me know in the comments if you think that you're going to be switching to Z Suite or if you're actually going to be staying with Chi2 Box. If you like this video, please hit like and please consider subscribing. It really gives me the motivation to continue creating content like this one. So until the next one, 
Happy printing!